Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, doing React application in JavaScript versus in ClojureScript. So ClojureScript is a functional language that compiled into JavaScript. It is very similar to Clojure, but they are two different languages. So earlier this year, I was in a project writing a website to help people join a union. We have a backend in Clojure doing like data processing stuff. And then the front end, we choose to use React. Um, it's a really simple front end. Um, basically, there's three steps in joining a union. You find out what union you are in, and you find out the fee, and then you fill out some web form, and then you are in. So all these are pretty standard, pretty um, easy you know, UI stuff. But throughout the development process, me and my team has a few frustration especially with the front-end code. Um, and at that time, I come across uh, ClojureScript. So I do a lot of Ruby. I actually like dynamic type compared to Rahul. And I love Clojure. And so I was like, huh, React actually promotes functional style of doing things. And ClojureScript is a functional language. Maybe binding them together will be a good thing. So I set up um, to, I have this idea to rewrite the front end code that we have in my own time using just Clojure script. So let's talk about JavaScript. I'm sure Rahul has convinced you that JavaScript is one good language with all the fun <laughs> stuff. Um, I'm just going to talk more into it, uh, but in the context of React. So in React, JavaScript, there's two types of components. So there is um, a class component which gives you, give you access to um, the local state, the um, component lifecycle methods. And there's another type called functional component, uh, which is just a dummy component that do the view rendering. The rule of thumb with choosing a right component is you should always use functional component unless you can't. But what I struggle with is, how do I know I really can't use functional um, component? Like, there's been a few times in the project where we created class component because we thought we need local state. We thought we need access to like um, the lifecycle method. But and, and then we we make our life harder just by going down that, that path. The code become more complicated, harder to reason about. And then slowly, as we get better at doing React, we realize, hey, maybe that component can actually be a functional component that are just simple. And we go back and refactoring it, and turn out, yes, it is. Um, um, by refactoring it to functional component, it becomes much more easier to understand and much easier to test. But what I'm trying to say is knowing what to do takes experience. And if you are new to the platform, the language, it's hard to know where that line is. Another thing about JavaScript React is um, there's a few types of data that you can pass in into the component, the prop, state, or context. Um, and understanding the difference among each of them is important. Otherwise, you, you do the wrong thing. And the component lifecycle is also the core part when you're doing React. And um, component will mount, component did mount. When when should you use which is all a question that you need to solve. Compare my experience writing Clojure script. Um, everything is just data and function. You have a component function, you pass in data, whatever your, your component needed, and they are just regular data, nothing fancy. And the component lifecycle in Clojure script feels to me more like an advanced feature. I wrote the whole application without having to deal with any lifecycle method. So I don't actually need to care, and I can write an application. I think that's quite hard to achieve in JavaScript. And yeah, as Rahul said, JavaScript, like I have been writing JavaScript for a few years now. But every time when I have to write it, it's just not as straightforward to me how I can write this properly and easily. It's hard to write good JavaScript. Um, how many of you actually know Clojure or Clojure script here? 
Okay, cool. Um, React. Okay, a lot more. Cool. Um, so I'm just will go through some simple um, syntax stuff between Clojure Script and JavaScript. So in Clojure Script, you call a function by having parentheses outside. In here, to do a print line, you have the print line function, and then you give it the argument "Hello World," and then it will execute. In JavaScript, you do console log. The entry point to a React, as many of you will know, is a root component. So in Clojure Script, you have you declare the root component as a function, and then you do whatever element you want inside it. In JavaScript, um, this. JavaScript is an example of a functional component. It is just a rendering um, component, and then you mount the component onto the view by using the React DOM render function. And in Clojure Script, it's roughly the same deal. You have a render component, you give it your root component, it render onto your element. I have to use this uh, library in Clojure Script called Reagent. It is uh, it provides a in simple interface to doing React stuff in Clojure Script. Um, it's quite straightforward. It's just a very thin layer, and it's really simple to use as well. To my surprise, in Clojure Script, it's actually really really easy to do JavaScript interloop. So you are given a global JS namespace. And then you just call the function however you would normally call it, document.getElementById. So that's pretty standard. Next, I will go into some more details comparison. So for this talk, I picked out a few areas that I found interesting or different just between the two language. The first one is application state. So in React.js, um, you, we started the project with um, not having um, any store. We just use pure React, but it got to a point where our um, state is becoming hard to manage. So we introduced Redux, which is a default um, store management if you are in React. And so you give you you have this global. Um, store um, data object that you have all the application state in there. And then the view use the data in the store to render, um, the, to display the view. And when your user interact with the view, you dispatch an action, which will then get handled by a reducer, which will then update your store. And then finally, the store updates will get rendered onto the view again. This to me feels like a lot of boilerplate. Like every time when you want to add a new data into your store, you need to create a new reducer. You need to create a new action, maybe one or maybe two, depends on how many ways you can update your, um, your data. And surely that's a better way, right? And welcome to the Clojure Script world. So Clojure Script has this, um, immutable data structure called Atom. What it does is um, it, it provides you a safe way to um, write a mutable data. So what happens is every time when you want to replace a value in uh, Atom, underneath the, you, you use a function to update the value. And underneath what happens is it will actually do a compare. So if some other thread is trying to update this um, atom, it will actually stop and retry until it is safe to update. So by having data in the atom, again, you use the data to render your view. And when the user interact with your view, you can update the atom straight away because it is safe to do so. By having a good data structure in your language, you basically avoid having to do boilerplate code. And many people who come from the closure or closure script world, they already know what an atom is. So you don't need to re relearn the, the framework, like what an action is, how action tied to a reducer, or how the store finally get updated. So I think that is actually simpler. Um, the next thing, templating language. So in React.js, the 
it's, it's very common to use JSX. You can choose not to, but I think you might struggle down, like if your views start to get bigger. I don't have any problem with people using JSX. I prefer not to, but what, what I can't um, get across is people forget that all of this HTML looking code, all of this tag, they are actually just function call. So when people forget about they are just function call, they forget that they can actually dry it out. They can pull things apart and reuse um, the, the code. And what they end up doing is just copy and paste because for them this is just another HTML. So what, like, when you have a language that take away the familiarity of what a programming should be about, people tend to forget. And another thing by having a templating language is um, whenever you need to do code interpolation, you need to do some special thing. So in JSX, you wrap it in the curly braces. And here, what we actually want to do is just an if statement. So if the component is touched and there's an error, I want to di display error message. But isn't it strange that you use a logical end operator to do your if statement? So, in CodeJustScript, I use a library called Hiccup. Um, it, is, it just uses um, standard data structure. You, you have vectors as your element, and then you have hash as your attributes. And all of these are just um, the, the standard data structure, nothing fancy. And when you need to do any um, um, condition, you just use a regular function like how you would in anywhere else of your code base. And for me, this still look very readable. And it looked like um, I can straight away understand how my um, tree, my, the structure of my element is without compromising the, the um, the default data without having to do a special thing. The next thing is routing. In React, that, um, the default routing library that people will use is React Router. That's what we choose to use as well. But when the first time I come across this code, I was like, why do people want to put routing in their view file? Right? And then I was like, Hang on, okay, this is JSX. JSX equals function. And so this actually just um, a case statement probably. And so, and then I start to accept, okay, okay, they are just switching based on the path to decide what component to render in the middle of the page. But still, weird. <laughs> and then <laughs> into closure script. You, I use a library called Secretary. It provides a very standard, like, dev route. You have a route, and then you decide what page you want to be in. And this, this looks normal to me. This is, like, w what you would expect in, um, let's say, Node or in Ruby Sinatra. You, accept, you expect that you have route and then the page that need to do the thing. And, and as you probably... Like already know, I, I value familiarity a lot. Like I think as a developer, we jump across different language most of the time. Like being able to come into a language and then understand what it's doing and then like get to know, like apply the knowledge that you learn from different language into the language that you are dealing with at the moment is important to me. The last thing that I want to show you is async API call. So um, the front end app that we have um, made a lot of application um, API call to the back end to fetch data so that we can show a drop down to let users select the value. I just want to compare side by side how you would do it um, in JavaScript using Redux and in ClojureScript using whatever. And First of all, in Redux, you have this function called dispatch because everything starts with a dispatch when you want to do anything with the store. And, but in ClojureScript, it's just another function call. 
nothing fancy, just function call. And then once you make the function call in, Java, in JavaScript land, you will have this promise and then callback, which is another layer of complexity there. In ClojureScript, there's this library called call async, which help you deal with um, asynchronous um, programming code. And so what you have here is um, you can just call a get request and then your code is as if it is blocking until the request come back and then you continue with whatever response you have. Don't get me wrong, it is impossible to write blocking code in JavaScript. What happened underneath with coercing is that you wrap the block in a go block and then underneath it, it get rewrite into a callbacks like a normal JavaScript. But the point is, you as a developer don't have to care about it. You just write your code that is readable, continue sequencing, and then you are good to go. You don't have to care about callbacks and things like that. It, it does have a catch though, like that doing this um, is the first time that I deal with coercing, and it, it trapped me a few times that um, once you are in the async world, you are in it for forever. So, like, everything that you do, you, you have to know, okay, this is a promise that come back, and then this is how I should extract the data. I can't just go back to the normal thing. Um, and, and another thing about the difference between JS and CLJS is once you get the response, you do whatever you want, and then once you're ready to update the state, in JavaScript, you just swap the value into your application state. But in JS, the JavaScript Redux way, you dispatch another action to update your state. So, man. Um, <laughs> and just look at the code. This, these two things, they, they do the same thing. They do an API call and then um, get value, update the store, right? Update the application state. But the code that is in ClojureScript is like half the length of the JavaScript one. I'm not saying the line numbers matter, but just that you can only fit so many things in your head. The smaller the code base, the easier it is to get into, like to understand it, to read it, and, and less thing to worry about. So, ClojureScript, huh? React, what do I... Um, there's lots of good thing about ClojureScript. All the functional good bits that you get is excellent, but it also has some down bit. ClojureScript is a much smaller community compared to JavaScript. That means um, documentation can be lagging. That means um, you might not find library that you need. Luckily, in ClojureScript, it's not too hard to it's actually quite easy to just port any JavaScript library into ClojureScript. But um, having a small community also means that often you don't get to stack overflow your way to a solution because you will be the first one who face that problem. Like, I was trying to debug this problem. I, I did some refactoring. I moved my atom into a separate file so that it's like contain single file. And then my state stopped updating, I was like, what? I just move it, it should just work, right? And then two hours, two hours later, I realized that it's because I didn't import the React library on my new file, and because of that, the connection of React re-rendering um, did not get bind to the atom. It had to go through the reagent library in order to do that. And then another time, I used, so um, throughout this project, um, the closure script project I used, uh, a tool called FigWheel, which provides you with um, hot reload loading. So as soon as you change your code base, it will get loaded on your browser. I, I highly recommend it. It's a really good tool. Um, and I don't think there's such thing in JavaScript yet. I might be wrong, but um, anyway. <clears throat> so I was trying to do debugging, and I have some print line statement. And then I realized every time I reload my page, the print line statement get executed twice. 
So I couldn't figure it out. So I was like, okay, I will just stop the server and then start again. And then now when I reload the page, it print out three times. <laughs> so I, and, and yeah, a few hours later, I realized it's because every time when Fit will start up the server, it create a new tab. And the old tab still there. And then, fine. So I actually have three tabs running, and therefore there's three server like code loading happening. It's like, oh. The, the last thing I think is also the most important thing with struggling in Clojure Script is architecture. It's, it's quite a new thing, and there's no set, like, set architecture to help you get started. So at the time when I was writing this Clojure Script app, application, I, I struggle a lot to, in, in terms of like, how, how should I structure my code so that it's easy to extend? How do I like isolate things? And, and the thing that I end up with is, uh, my conclusion is keep the mutable part of your code base in, like, in the most smallest possible way. So I end up have this kind of like a MVC model. So I have a model that know about my store structure, which, which do the update to the store. And then I have this controller that's interact between a model and my view, but it is um, pure. It, it's a pure function, so it's easy to test. The only um, um, non-pure part is in the model. And then the view is just as normal. Um, there's a new library that um, came out called Refrain in Clojure Script. It's basically a uh, Redux for Clojure Script. Um, and because it is a framework, it also comes with all the boilerplate. So it has like, um, like they call it event, which is basically action, and event, event handler, which is basically reducer. I think it is unnecessary. But if you want somewhere to get started, you don't want to deal with any of this architecture, how to structure your code base problem, I think it might be a good place to start to keep you going, just follow what they recommend, how you should go about managing your code base. Anyway, so I think in, in final conclusion, I, I really like writing in Clojure Script. I think, um, uh, it get rid of a lot of the nonsense or unpredictability of JavaScript. It gives you um, a way to actually properly write functional code. It is a much simple language to understand. And even like a lot of the React best practice this day geared towards the functional thing, the functional style of um, doing things. So like having as many functional component as possible, having immutable data as much as possible. So like, I think overall, it is, it's, it's actually quite nice to write Clojure Script for React. And if you are in an environment where it is impossible to port to Clojure Script straight away, I still encourage you to give it a try because through doing this um, exercise, I actually learn a lot. It, it actually changed the way that I approach JavaScript now. Like the, the way of, okay, isolating the mutable part. I think it's a learning that I take away from doing this. And maybe you, you will find something that um, how you improve the way you write JavaScript by doing Clojure Script for fun. Thank you. Why did you choose Closure over something like pure script is, is just dynamically types. Like, yeah, like that, that is a huge reason. Like I, I like dynamic type, and I. Could, could you elaborate a little bit? Like, what, what do you think the benefit of dynamic types? Um, like? So I come from Ruby background. I think when you are dealing with dynamic type language, it's a kind of almost like a different way of writing your code. So um, although when I write code, I do. Um, I, I use the repo a lot, so I try out what, what is possible, or I put a breakpoint and see what needs to happen. 
And I think if you are in a type language, you can't even get your code compiled before you can do anything. And I think for me that is a big stop. Like I can't experiment with my code. I, I must write it in a way that it will compile. That means you have to pass all the type check. Um, yeah, it's just a different style of writing, I guess. Cool. Um, yes? Um, I'm just curious if you've tried at all to introduce some larger spec into your code and if that's provided any benefits or if you're thinking about using it. I have not. Um, I, I've been looking into that and I, I think I haven't found a use case, uh, like all the demo that they um, describe, like for example, you have a random number generator, you use code respect. I think that is um, a, a good example to use it. But in the day-to-day -day code base, I, I don't know how many situations I can do that in. So if there's a, a situation that let me do that, I will definitely try it. <laughs> 